these prepaid cell phones were unveiled at a Walmart in Georgia, the crowd pounced like a pack of wolves. One woman appears to end up with someone's hand in her mouth. Walmart says no one got hurt. From a scramble for DVDs at another Walmart in San Diego, to this rush on a Forever 21. As a country, we're sick over this Black Friday thing. Oh my God, I got to get it. No, just please, for the love of God, calm down for a second. You see that hand in the mouth? And then it got worse, and Georgia guys uh, allegedly stealing two DVD players. Security guards tackle them in the parking lot. They put him in a chokehold. He died. You know why? He was in a chokehold. When the cops showed up, he was dead, and they were still sitting on top of him. So, I mean, this is absolutely crazy, but there are bigger problems at Walmarts that are not contained at Black Friday. In fact, over 100 U.S. cities saw strikes in different Walmarts throughout the country, largest strike ever against Walmart. In fact, I want to give you a local report about that as well. Let's look. There were some Walmart employees considering joining this protest, but they said they could be fired if they did. They also told us that their benefits and their hours have been cut. A big concern protesters point out is they say workers are threatened if they appear to be forming a union. They have been harassing people for years who even think about organizing. Well, now let's talk about why they might want to strike and what they're upset about. Like, to, for example, their average pay. You know what it is? It's $8.81 an hour. That's about $15,000 a year. You know what that is? That's the poverty level for a household of two. So when you're paying people at the poverty level, it's not surprising that at some point they might say, hey, you know what? That's not a lot, and that presents a lot of problems for our families. Now, here's what's interesting. It also presents problems for the American taxpayers. So uh, two more facts. They earn 31% less on average, the average Walmart worker did, than an average retail worker in a large store. Not an average other profession, retail workers. So what happens? That costs taxpayers... $86 million in public assistance throughout the year. Okay, now that's amazing. So that we're subsidizing Walmart. Well, all the conservatives who hate all the subsidies, ah, government, throw that on. Well, shouldn't you hate that? Shouldn't that be a huge problem? Shouldn't they actually pay their workers a decent wage so that we don't have to subsidize them as the government? Well, one guy who agrees with that is Alan Grayson. So he went over the protests during Thanksgiving. Let's look at a local news report out of WESH2 in Orlando. At the Goldenrod Supercenter, protesters were asked by management and police to move from the door to the sidewalk. They were joined by Congressman-elect Alan Grayson, who Thursday night escorted Walmart worker Lisa Lopez from a store because she felt she should not have to work on Thanksgiving. I think the minimum wage should be $10 or more. Uh, and, and I think that, that they should be able to make a decent living wage. I'm a single mom, and the pay, I, I can't afford to, to live on the pay they pay us. And Congressman Alan Grayson from Florida is joining us now. Congressman, great to have you here with us. First of all, how angry were, uh, was your family when uh, you didn't join them for Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> They, uh, they're used to making sacrifices, in my case. <laughs> They've been doing it for years. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, in all seriousness, uh, what were you doing there? Why did you want to go and, and give these people uh, turkey sandwiches? What was the real object? Well, well, we handed out bags to the workers who had to work. They didn't want to work. They had to work on Thanksgiving night. Couldn't be with their families. The bags had three things inside. A turkey sandwich, because it was Thanksgiving, a bag of chips, and a letter informing them of their right to organize. All right, now, what do you think here? Walmart says, hey, listen, oh, these strikes were no big deal. Only about 50 people walked out. Now, there are reports that that's just not true. Uh, but, you know, we're perfectly lovely to our employees. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, it's ridiculous. As you pointed out, the average associate at Walmart makes less than $9 an hour. I don't know how anybody these days can afford their rent, afford their food, afford their health coverage afford their transportation costs just to get to work when they're making only nine dollars an hour or less and who ends up paying for it it's the taxpayer i think the number you gave is actually pretty low i've seen much bigger numbers the taxpayer pays the earned income credit the taxpayer pays for medicare the tax sorry medicaid the taxpayer pays for the unemployment insurance when they cut their hours down and the taxpayer pays for other forms of public assistance like food stamps I think that the, the taxpayer is getting fed up paying for all these things when, in fact, 
Walmart can get every single employee it's got, even the CEO, a 30% raise, and Walmart would still be profitable. Now, Congressman Grace, you're going back into Congress now. Is there anything you could do about it legislatively, or is it just simply political and economic pressure on Walmart to be more decent to their workers? Well, one thing we've already done is in the Affordable Care Act, we have a mandate that the employer is supposed to provide health coverage or pay the difference. And I think that's going to make a big difference in the lives of these Walmart workers. But that's just the start. I don't think that, that Walmart should, in effect, be the largest recipient of uh, public assistance in the country. In state after state after state, it, Walmart employees represent the largest group of Medicaid recipients, the largest group of food stamp recipients, and the taxpayers shouldn't have to bear that burden. It should be Walmart. So yeah. we're going to take that burden and put it where it belongs, on Walmart. So that's really interesting, and I want the audience to understand this. This is really fascinating, because Walmart, as Congressman Grayson is saying there, winds up becoming uh, the biggest taker of, of government subsidies uh, in some of these programs. But the six heirs to the Walmart fortune have more money than 40% of the country combined. That is amazing. Now, Congressman Grayson, uh, liberal think tank Demos came up with this idea. They said, all right, look, if you just increase wages to $25,000 a year for the average Walmart worker, from, they say 21,000, but in fact, uh, we think it's lower, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt, right? And it, that would increase costs to us of $20 per year for the customer, right? $20 per year doesn't seem like a lot, for the average customer. And then here's the results. You know what it would do? It would lift one and a half million people out of poverty, create 100,000 new jobs, and give a $13.5 billion GDP boost. Now, what, what do you make of those numbers? Is, is that a deal uh, that you think the American people are willing to take if it costs an extra $20 a year to, to have these people make a decent wage and, and possibly improve the economy? Listen, I think the numbers are mostly right, but I think the numbers are actually different from that. Uh, according to the numbers that I've seen, as I said before, every Walmart employee could get that raise to $25,000 a year, every single one of them, and Walmart would still be profitable without raising prices. Look, Walmart already charges people as much as they possibly can. That's the nature of being in business. But what they do is they give their employees as little as they possibly can. They exploit them and keep them in the dark without benefits and without knowledge of the right to unionize, and the difference is what they call profit. And Walmart is hugely, hugely profitable. So I don't think that customers are going to end up paying any more at all, not a penny more. What's simply going to happen is that Walmart's going to make a little bit less profit. All right, Congressman Alan Grayson, good to have a progressive fighter back in Congress. Thank you for joining us. And back at Walmart's uh, sticking up for people as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome.